What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I just wanted to do a short video on where I get a lot of my research from when I'm doing segments from 1920 back to the 1700s. Now, this is the Police Gazette News Weekly magazine. And I have over 150 of these. And it really helps me out to concrete my information from subject matter containing boxing from the 1700s on up. Now the Police Gazette first came out in 1845. The editor for that particular weekly magazine at the time was Richard K. Fox. And he came out with a weekly journal that had various topics in a magazine. And since boxing was a very big sporting event at that time, they covered the actual major events that was happening during the course of time. I'm just going to show you a few of the editions that I have. This is the New York Saturday, May 21st, 1887. These are the actual magazines. New York Saturday, June 4th, 1887. New York, Saturday, June 18th, 1887. New York, Saturday, July 2nd, 1887. And New York, Saturday, July 30th, 1887. And this is just what I pulled out from the collection because I wanted to show you a few things that's in the magazine as well. A lot of these fighters that I'm just skimming through are fighters that you don't really hear about, but they played a significant role in the champions that are discussed. You have Black Griffo, Tommy Sullivan. Tommy Sullivan fought George Dixon, as you can see here. George Dixon was told to put on handcuffs, meaning not to punch hard or hit the target when he saw openings against this particular fighter, Tommy Sullivan. And when he didn't do it, they automatically gave the decision to Tommy Sullivan. And that was significant because it ruined chances for George Dixon to regain the title. Here you have Ray Bronson, very good lightweight fighter. He was in there with Joe Walcott, Barbados Demon, Matty Barlin. He wound up becoming a champion. And he had Tommy Peltz. Tommy Peltz was a very, very good fighter. And I just want to show you a few articles inside these weekly magazines because I want to give you a perspective of what was going on in boxing at that particular time. Now, just remember, the articles that you're looking at are the actual articles that took place at that particular time. Now I'm showing you this article here. This is the National Police Gazette in New York, June 4th, 1887. And this is significant information that I'm looking at here. The reason why Sullivan does not agree to arrange, they're talking about John O'Sullivan, a match with Jake Kilrain is because he has no one to back him. To contend according to London prize ring rules for $5,000 side bet and a championship. Now, Jake Kilrain did fight in 1887, but he fought Jim Smith. And if you look at it, the other video, you're going to see that's how the lineal line began. 
but he was supposed to fight John L. Sullivan in 1887. So instead, two years later, he would face John L. Sullivan in 1889. But without these specific details, I would not know that. So that's why I get a lot of information from a direct source. Because a lot of this information are not in books that you purchase in the store or online. Patty Ryan says he will have another go with Sullivan when the latter reaches San Francisco and that he will let Sullivan determine whether it shall be with bare knuckles or gloves. Again, useful information. An English exchange says Jim Mace and Jim Smith. Now, Jim Smith is the fighter who fought Jake Kilrain in 1887. The English champion, Herbury the Hatchet. Mace now intends to attend visit America and bring Smith with him. So Jim Mace, and I showed you Jim Mace in another video, decided to hang up the gloves and work with Jim Smith. Now here's another page of this particular weekly edition. Here you have a question. And it was answered. Patty Ryan's nose and jaw were not broken when he fought John L. Sullivan because there was issues and concerns on a side bet that went wrong because they thought that Patty Ryan's jaw and nose was broken. But the question was answered that it was not. We cannot give the age of actresses. Here you have Tom King did not or did defeat John C. Heenan. So the reason why I'm showing you these is because this is where I get a lot of my information. John L. Sullivan is the champion pugilist of America. He will be compelled to defend the title against all comers. Now see, John O'Sullivan is currently the champion, but he's not the world champion. He's the champion of Boston. Joe Gauss and Patty Ryan fought 87 rounds in one hour and 24 minutes. Joe Gauss stands five foot eight and a half inches in height and generally weighed 150 pounds. Tom Cribb stood six foot one and a half inches in height and weighed 200 pounds. Now, Tom Cribb is the fighter who fought Tom Molyneux. John O'Sullivan was born October 15, 1858. And it's just tons of information in here. So I'm just giving you a little bit of insight on how I get my information. So if I tell you something, 90% of the times, 98% of the times, I know exactly what I'm talking about at the time that I tell you. I may have to go back and double check, but I'm pretty accurate on what I'm talking about. So I just wanted to give you an idea of where I get information from. And uh, it's not always second hand. I try and get first hand information. Charlie Mitchell says, if the fighters of America and their backers will simply mind their own business and leave me alone. I shall be ob obliged to them. Now that reminds me of what's happening today. So it's a lot of fun going through this. You learn a lot of information that you didn't know before. And I've been doing this for 30 years. All right, so this is another newspaper, July 30th, 1887. And here's an article. Should Kilrain, meaning Jake Kilrain, face Smith, meaning Jim Smith, battle 
in the area for the championship of the world and victories perch on the English champion's colors. Kilrain would then be matched to meet John L. Sullivan for $5,000, aside for it's an open question. So there's talks on a John L. Sullivan getting an opportunity to face Jay Kilrain, providing he gets past Smith, or Smith gets past Jay Kilrain. Uh, here's more information for my research. In the glove contest between George M. Robinson and John L. Sullivan at San Francisco, California, eight ounce gloves were used. Thomas Chandler was the referee, and Harold B. Cook was the timekeeper for Robinson and William Muller for Sullivan. Robinson was knocked down eight times in the first round, going down at each blow from Sullivan. Without receiving any punishment. And this is just basic information that I put towards my research. So like I said, I've been studying boxing for basically 35 years, but I've been in boxing for 40 years, and it's been a lot of fun, and that's why it's hard for me when I hear a lot of the excuses today, because I know what boxing is about, and I know what I'm accustomed to reading and watching and viewing. I have well over 500 DVDs. I'm sorry, CDs of boxing. I have about 250 reel to reels. And uh, I watch a lot of the old fights, and, and it teaches me a lot about what I'm trying to understand about the game. So I just wanted to share that with you in Scrapbook Boxing. Salute to all my subscribers. Hope I didn't bore you, but I just wanted to give you a perspective of how I get my research, and I get it from direct source. So, peace. Thanks for hanging in there with me. All great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute.